In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a flush using a water and vinegar mix of this 2001-225 OX66 Yamaha Saltwater Series motor. Uh, this motor I've had just recent issues. Last time I had it out in the water, I experienced an overheat alarm uh, that was not at low idle speeds, but at more of a cruising speed. So I was able to limp back into the uh, boat ramp, got the boat out of the water, and started doing some troubleshooting. Um, I did try just a regular straight flush with water. That didn't do it, and that's where I started reading more about it and got a little bit more educated on the use of water and vinegar. Now, I'm not going to say in this video whether that's right or wrong. I'm just going to share my experience using that. Uh, I did do the flush with the thermostats in place. In fact, I actually replaced the thermostats. I put brand new thermostats in, uh, ran the engine in a large tub, much larger than what you're seeing here with, uh, it was about a, uh, I'd say like a 10 to one mix, something like that. Um, maybe a bit stronger, but anyway, uh, ran that with thermostats in place and then did a quick flush with, uh, or a little bit of a, you know, a nice thorough flush of fresh water. And again, still had the high temperature alarm. So now I'm trying this again, uh, looking at the location where the thermostat sit, you can see a lot of buildup in there and this side as well. Now, one thing I want to tell you is I did, or I do have access and do own a infrared thermometer, something like this. And it's very obvious that the overheat condition is happening on this uh, starboard side, this starboard cylinder bank here. So. I'll show you again up in here. After removing the thermostat, there is significantly more buildup on the starboard side than there is on the port side. So that leads me to believe that somewhere in here in my water uh, water passages in the water jacket, I've got a blockage that I've got to free up. And the uh, attempt earlier with just running it in a large tub wasn't doing it. So this time around, I'm actually gonna remove the thermostats. Uh, I'll put the covers back on with the thermostats not in place. That'll hopefully allow for better circulation through there because uh, I would think some of those larger buildups there are just not getting past the thermostats, so that's not helping. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'll have a tub down here. I'm gonna try to do like a four to one mix, so four gallons of water. I've actually got heated water and then one gallon of distilled vinegar. And this is just a submersible pump that I got off Amazon, about $50. And then there's a hose that runs up to the uh, tube. Let me see, hopefully I can get a shot of that for you. So that's the tube that would typically interface directly with the water pump. And let me just show you the water pump real quick because some may question, well, maybe the water pump's an issue. All right, so I dropped the lower unit just to inspect the water pump, suspecting that perhaps something was wrong with the actual source, right? The pump, this water pump is, is uh, cycling that water up through the engine. And this entire pump kit I replaced last season. So it's relatively new, pulled it apart and everything looks fine here. So I don't have any reason to suspect that it's the water pump that's causing an issue. Plus when I was running it in the tub, it, it appeared that I was getting plenty of water circulation. So that's my, reason for for not looking at the water pump as the the cause but instead we're going to look at possible possible blockage in the water jacket inside the engine so before i go ahead and get this going one thing i want to do is i want to make sure that i have good adequate flow through the entire water jacket um, in my initial flush where i just had the lower unit installed and did a full uh, submersion of the lower unit in that larger tub and just ran the engine for you know a few different cycles you know there was no i didn't have any assurance that i was getting full circulation through the whole system um, so what i'm going to do is with this pump hooked up i've got a little switch through the extension cord and i'm going to cycle it now right now i just have water down in that tub i haven't added the vinegar yet but i just want to make sure that when i apply power to the pump the pump is producing enough circulation and flow to reach the top side of the cylinders here. So we'll go ahead and turn that switch on.
pee hole is going. Alright, I think I need to add some more water down below. So let me try that. Okay, so I now have uh, eight hour, uh, excuse me, eight gallons of hot water in there, and I'm putting hot water in there to help break down what may be in that engine. And you know, I don't have to, I don't have the risk of the water overheating through this process because I'm not running the engine. I'm just running a, a heated water, uh, and I will be adding the vinegar uh, here in a minute. But I now have eight gallons in there, so let's see if that's enough for this pump to start pushing water. All right, so it looks like I have enough water pressure, so that'll be great. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll put something over here to divert the, the pee hole back into the tub so I'm not just wasting water, right? I'll just cycle the same amount of water, water the whole time. Um, now, if anybody's looked into this and they've seen things about uh, the potential problem being the poppet valve or the pressure control valve, um, I actually pulled mine out and I looked at that just out of concern. And the spring looked clean. The actual valve mechanism itself, which looks like a, a little piece of plastic with crosshairs on both sides, that had a little bit of residue on it, but it wasn't bad. Uh, and the seat on the inside, the rubber seat, looked fine. But uh, out of caution, I did order replacement parts that are coming. And what I've also learned is that the actual valve assembly itself, what is that plastic crosshairs, uh, they've changed the design a little bit to be more of a mushroom head. So I'll be replacing that. But I looked at that, I didn't see any blockages or anything that would indicate that that's getting hung up. So, you know, again, I'm leaning towards something block it, blocking in the water jacket. Um, I talked about using the infrared thermometer. And when I was experiencing that overheat condition um, the other day when I was doing the initial flush, this bank right here, this was running about 125 degrees, maybe 135 degrees. When I was alarming, this was over 200 degrees. So it's very clear that the issue in my mind is happening on this side. I also saw the larger amount of buildup in this uh, thermostat hole here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and seal these thermostat holes back up with their covers. I'll go ahead and add the vinegar to the bottom. That'll give me an eight gallons of water to one gallon of vinegar mix. We'll go ahead and uh, see if we can get it cycling up. Got the covers back on. Uh, thermostats are not in there. I removed the thermostats. And we'll go ahead and I've got my just gallon of distilled white vinegar. And this will give me an eight to one mix, which from what I gather just reading online where others have, have done something similar that's maybe a little bit stronger um, I've seen anywhere from 10 to 15, 10 to 15 to 1 uh, but never really saw a clear answer on that but anyway so this will be 8 to 1 mix I've got this little diverter here I don't know if you guys have seen this but you see it a lot advertised with oil changes but it's kind of a moldable type of rubber um, so if you're doing an oil filter change you can kind of steer where any res uh, any uh, remnant oil would, would pour out or spill as you're doing that. So I've got that in place to try to steer the hole back and steer the uh, water from the pee hole back into my tub down there. So let's go ahead and kick it back on and see what's going on here. May have to come up with a better solution for that. I don't want to lose all this water here. I want to kind of keep it contained. So I've got that cycling through. Everything is tight on top. Everything looks good there. 
like we got good flow through the engine. So I intend to leave this cycling for about four hours, three to four hours to really get a good flush. Uh, once I do that, I'll see what I've got, what kind of remnants on the bottom of this tub. And then I'll do a real good flush with fresh water afterwards. But again, this is my second attempt. The first attempt I did a in-tub flush where I had a lower unit installed, ran it, uh, cycled it for a few times. Uh, and to be completely honest, before that I even tried a, uh, a bilge pump. Just pushing water through this natural flush. And I just don't think I was getting the flow I needed with the bilge pump. So that's why I decided to do uh, a full lower unit dunk in a larger tub and attempted that. But again, I was still getting the overheat alarm after that entire flush. And again, I didn't do that four hours. I just cycled the engine maybe three or four times for a few minutes at a time. So this is my, my last resort. I'm going to see if this actually does a good enough flush to clear any kind of blockage or what might be causing that overheat issue stemming from this starboard side of the engine. All right, so something interesting has happened. I've been running for about five or 10 minutes now, and you can see I've really lost pressure on that little pee hole there. Um, so what I did, I checked just to make sure I was still connected, and I still have this hose uh, with a tight connection up into that uh, water tube. And it looks like I still have really good flow coming out of the pump. So one thing I'm gonna try to do is see if maybe perhaps there's a little blockage in there. So I've got a little, piece of wire I'll try sticking up in the hole and see if that'll clear it. Now if I put my finger on there, it's building up pressure. But it quickly drops. What do you suspect that is? All right, so what I ended up doing, and I'll try this, is I, I removed the hose that goes to the output over here from the, the little barb. And I just had a piece of quarter inch fuel hose that I'm just running off the side just to see if there was a blockage maybe that's been created in that hose. So I'll put the pump back on and see if that helps. looking much better so I will continue to monitor that but it looks like looks like I probably had something that blocked ended up blocking that hose so I'll have to flush the actual um, original holes out to see if I can free that up but in the meantime this is working out really good diverting that water right back into the tank so can keep keep this running uh, let me show you something real quick so turn it off it's only been going for about, what, 10, 15 minutes. And I can tell you that there's quite a bit of sediment already in the bottom of this container. This may be hard to show, especially with the water dripping, but you can see I'm already getting quite a bit of sediment down their bottom. So, you know, maybe I'm being overly optimistic, but I'm hoping, really hoping that this does a trick for me. So we'll keep it going for another three hours or so. All right, so motor's been flushing for about three and a half, four hours now. So let's go ahead and I'll cut the pump off. Let that water run out. And while that's happening, let's go ahead and take a look at the thermostat here. At least under the cover and let's see how it looks compared to what we saw before with all the all the sediment sitting there the 
is a 10 millimeter bolt. It looks much better. I'm not seeing any of that sediment sitting there. Don't have the best light. Well, you know, it's not perfect, but it's certainly a lot cleaner than it was. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hook up a standard engine flush here to my garden hose and I'll just run flush, fresh water through it for about 15 or 20 minutes just to get a good engine flush on there. And I ultimately won't know the results or how successful this was until I rebuild that water pump and reinstall the lower unit and I'll go ahead and run it in a tub of fresh water and see if uh, it overheats or not. All right, so I've got everything put back together. I've got the lower unit installed. That's after a replacement water pump. And then I've also got the thermostats inserted up top. So I'm just waiting for the water to fill up in this tub, let the level come up a little bit higher. I'll go ahead and run it. And I'll monitor the temperatures on each one of these cylinder banks using a thermometer. And I'll show you what I'm seeing.
All right, well, I'm pretty confident I've, I've got the issue resolved. Um, as you saw with the temperatures, everything looked reasonable within range. Saw a little bit higher elevated temperatures on the right side when compared to the left side, but overall not a big deal, still within spec. So after thinking about this and all I've gone through, what I think was happening was, if you recall early in the video, I was showing all the, the buildup on this, the right side. I, I would assume that what was happening was all that all those deposits, uh, residual calcium, whatever you call them, were basically building up at that thermostat and causing a water restriction to where the water was not cycling well through the right side and then resulting in overheat conditions. So now I'm just running a salt remover through the engine, run a few cups of that just to do a final rinse and flush. And then we'll go ahead and get it on the water and hopefully overheat alarms are a thing of the past. Thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it. Hope you got something out of the video. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you.